Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on what part of the, the world you're in. Uh, I'm going to kick off the, uh, the webinar this morning or this afternoon, uh, just quickly detailing a little bit about Invest Puerto Rico, a little bit about Puerto Rico, and then I'll introduce the, uh, the moderator and the, the panel. Um, Invest Puerto Rico is a public-private partnership created by law. Uh, actually, I'll introduce myself first. Peter Reese, I'm, I'm the Business Development Director with Invest Puerto Rico. Uh, so Invest Puerto Rico is a public-private partnership created by law with a mission to attract new business and capital investment. Invest Puerto Rico is governed by 11 board, uh, 11 member board of directors appointed by the governor of Puerto Rico and is comprised of three public sector representatives and eight private sector representatives. Our mission is mainly to promote Puerto Rico as a jurisdiction for new business and new capital investment to the island. Uh, we help companies with everything from incentives to connecting with resources from real estate or talent, uh, providing introductions to stakeholders and other experts. Um, but uh, just some quick fun facts about Puerto Rico. I'm not sure how much you know about Puerto Rico. I know it's known for beaches and cruise ships, but I wanted to offer some insight on the island's economy. Um, nearly 50% of Puerto Rico's GDP is due to manufacturing. Much of this is uh, based on pharmaceuticals, medical devices, aerospace, and other products. Historically, Puerto Rico has been involved in bioscience and aerospace. We're focused today on this convergence of bio and space, since a third of all space experiments on the International Space Station are bio experiments. And although initially Puerto Rico has had a fair share of crypto and blockchain players that have established on the island, this has also led to more cybersecurity, software development, and related sector growth in the island's aerospace defense cluster, but as well as in the uh, pharma, uh, medical device, and just general bioscience cluster. So today I'll introduce you first to Gail Nolan. She will be our moderator for the day. Gail is, our C is the CEO of Puerto Rico's 5G Zone, an appointed member of the Governor's Council for the Aerospace and Aeronautical in Industry of Puerto Rico, and designated representative for the Puerto Rico Space Foundation. Gail is a certified economic development professional specializing in technology-led economic development. She was previously the Wisconsin Advisor on Aerospace Initiatives and sponsored for the Wisconsin Aerospace Partners, a partnership with, uh, between Academia and Experimental Aircraft Association. Uh, formerly, she was also the Chief Strategy Officer at Invest Puerto Rico, so there's a direct tie-in. Hi, Peter. Thank you so much. Um, next, I will introduce our, our three panelists starting with Andreika Maldonado. She's the Director of Research Grants uh, Program at the Puerto Rico Science and Technology Research Trust. Uh, I'll just be shortening that down to the Puerto Rico Science Trust. Um, Andreika Maldonado leads the Research Grants Program, a local funding mechanism that supports the development of science technology research projects. As of August 2022, the program has awarded 120, 000, 120 grants since 2014, totaling $13.8 million in funding an ROI of $37 million. The research grants program is part of the Puerto Rico Science, Technology, and Research Trust. Andreka serves as a spokesman for the agency's programs involving scientific community, Puerto Rico government officials, other agencies, and stakeholders. In addition, she leads Beacon Initiative, which includes a platform that collects, displays, and analyzes uh, reports on academic and research activities on the island. Andreka also leads the Ford Research Symposium and the Ford Research and Innovation Summit, which is one of the premier showcase for in the Caribbean for science, technology, and innovation. Currently, she's a member of ProSpace, which is Puerto Rico's Opportunities in Space, offering funding opportunities for space-related research programs, but in general, bio programs as well. Uh, her program has created the Advanced Research Grant, which supports bioscience mac microgravity research projects. Prior to developing the, the grants program, Andreika served as a startup executive at Parallel 18, a top-level performance-driven international hub in Puerto Rico and focused on providing funding, mentorship, business connections, and investment. Our next panelist is Dr. Heath J. Mills, who is an extreme environment microbiology, microbiologist with academic degrees from Duke University, Georgia Institute of Technology. As a current chief scientific officer for Rhodium Scientific, he leads initiatives to expand terrestrial and space flight research capacities into the island commercial biotechnology sector. Dr. Mills has over 19 years of experience, including two faculty positions at Texas A&M and Houston University, studying biogeochemistry and molecular, molecular ecology and extreme environment ecosystems. Um, 
he's in he's uh, in biospace research over the past seven years. Mills has been a principal investigator and co-investigator in over 20 international space station science and engineering projects funded privately by the Department of Defense, National Science Foundation, and other other labs. Our next speaker, uh, our next panelist as well, is Luis Ramos, who's the site leader for Puerto Rico's Research Technology Center in Moca, Puerto Rico. Luis also serves as an engineering senior director for the Moca and Aguadilla Honeywell facilities. Luis is responsible for the administrative and day-to-day -day operations, as well as implementing strategies developed by Honeywell's aerospace leadership. Luis ensures proper business controls are maintained and responsible for all financial planning and capital expenditures. Luis is an active participant in academia, community, industrial activities in Puerto Rico, and has served as president of the PR Aerospace and Technology Cluster, board member of the PR Industrial Association, industry advisor for several universities in, in Puerto Rico, and currently on the advisory board for the 21st century tech government. Um, it's also kind of important to note that Gail, Andreika, and Heath have are founding members of Pro Space, along with the University of Puerto Rico, Maya Wes, and Denise, and the Council for Aerospace and Aeronautical Industry of Puerto Rico. With that, let's kick off to Gail and the panel. Boy, that was a mouthful, and I, I want to tell everyone who's participating that that only uh, scratched the surface of all of the uh, incredible uh, uh, attributes of this esteemed panel today. So um, thank you all so much for joining us and as we explore uh, uh, some of the exciting new things that are happening in Puerto Rico. Uh, so to kick this off, um, because it's really about the convergence of space and uh, bioscience, uh, leveraging the assets on the island of Puerto Rico historically in bioscience development. Um, Heath, could you talk a little bit about kind of the state of, of microgravity research and th the importance of that uh, as we move forward? Absolutely, Gail, and um, thank you, uh, Peter, for that great introduction. And it's a, a pleasure to be here, um, especially with Luis and, and Andreica. Um, for the webinar here today. And, and Gail, you're right. Right now, uh, we are at a very interesting time for uh, physical and biological sciences to be conducted in the microgravity environment um, from a number of standpoints. Um, first off, and in, in, in general, from the biological side, uh, biology, it, biology changes in space. Biology is very different in space. And it, 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 you have to think of space environment as a true environment. You move from one location, from New York to Puerto Rico to LA, we wear different clothes, we eat different foods, we respond to our local environment differently. It's the same thing with moving biology to space. The, the biology experiences different stressors, experiences different ways of living. And so it's up to us to now test in this environment for biomanufacturing capabilities, for drug discovery, drug development ideas, for regenerative medicine. Each one of these areas have a direct impact for research in the outer, the microgravity environment. So you have fundamental changes of how biology responds to space. Each one of those markets, each one of those areas can and should be tested in this environment. The physical science is the same thing. You have a change in gravity. You no longer have sedimentation. You no longer have stressors on the physical structure and building and dynamics of that building process. Chemistry, colloidal chemistry changes in space. You get more pure substance formations. So each one of these are able to be tested and should be tested in this, in this unique environment. Through the new commercial space access points, now you have the possibility for rapid testing of these new ideas, these new ways of doing biomanufacturing or production. And so between the new access points to space, the critical understanding of the, the fundamental factors involved with how biology, chemistry, and physical forces change the way we're able to conduct industry and manufacturing, you put these together and it's a real interesting time to go into this space environment for research and development, and especially within the, the biotech life science sector. So I think hopefully that starts the conversation off a little bit today and we can build on this as we go forward through the, through the next hour. 
Th thank you, Heath. And I think one of the examples I've I've heard that um, really resonates with me as a person who's not a scientist is um, the idea of uh, there's artificial retinas that have been created that are layering of proteins. When they when they manufacture them on Earth, they're maybe 25 percent um, success rate. When they manufacture them in space, because there is no gravity for sedimentation in, uh, interference, it's 100 uh, percent all the time. So, um, you know, compelling. These are things that are important to all of our lives. So um, exactly. thank you. So, so then the the next, so not to kind of bring it back to Puerto Rico, um, Andrea, could you talk a little bit about Puerto Rico's role and, and the Science Trust in particular, their interest in this particular field? Absolutely. So buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending you know, where you are right now. Uh, I'm gonna be talking uh, from the grants program perspective and our relationship with uh, the academia. So for the past decade, our research grants program has been financing research projects, providing funding to researchers and training opportunities to students, technicians, and contributing greatly to the knowledge economy of the island. And since our inception, we have funded several aerospace projects from sensors, antennas, unmanned aerial vehicles and others. And we just created the Advanced Research Grant Space Edition to promote uh, research in this area. So these type of projects create uh, training opportunities and foster collaboration within the space industry, but uh, we have a long way to go. We do not receive a lot of space-related uh, research projects. However, it is important to point out that more uh, than 60% of the projects that we fund at the Research Grants Program are in the biotech and bioscience sector. We know that this sector is very large at an academic and industry level. And also it is important to point out that Puerto Rico is the only territory of the United States that specializes in four of the five bioscience subsectors. And our goal is to connect bioscience with microgravity research. And this is why we created, uh, we formed the ProSpace that I believe it was mentioned at the beginning of the introduction is a strategic alliance with Rhodium that uh, is represented today by Heath Mills, um, also uh, by the Puerto Rico 5G Zone, Gale, uh, the University of Puerto Rico, um, the Council for Aerospace and Aeronautics. So all together, uh, we got um, this new uh, bioscience microgravity challenge. So I believe this is one of the first steps. And as I explained uh, before, we are leveraging the resources that are already available. In our case, we have a robust bioscience and pharmaceutical ecosystem. And for this reason is that we launched this uh, first microgravity um, challenge that allows people conducting bioscience research to send their projects into the International Space Station um, National Lab. So I believe this is a great first step. Um, I can continue talking and I can continue talking about uh, the um, academia perspective, but I will be respectful for the rest of the panelists. So later on, I will chat a little more about the initiatives that are happening currently at the University of Puerto Rico specifically. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. And, and um, the, as the Science Trust has been such a leader in developing um, research assets on the island. And so um, we're really excited about that, the partnership moving forward. Um, and so now to, to um, make it even more personal, uh, as we're talking about, obviously the purpose of this um, webinar is to talk about expanding this opportunity on the island. Um, and so uh, Luis Ramos from Honeywell and, and Honeywell has long been uh, a leader in aerospace and uh, uh, par uh, component parts within the space industry as well. And so Luis can talk um, based on their history on the island of Puerto Rico about the specific capacity of the island of Puerto Rico to serve this industry. And so uh, Luis, if you could talk a little bit about that. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Gail. And hello, everyone. And it is a pleasure for me being here today. And actually, it's a very timely subject. Um, and Puerto Rico has had a great history of supporting space operations dating back to the shuttle days, right? Um, 
but however, we had many engineers that were supporting space operations over in Florida, out of the or Texas, um, working for NASA. And, you know, over the last 30, 40 years, Puerto Rico has become a powerhouse when it comes to the bio pharma sciences. And as of the last 10 to 14 years, it also has a, a growing aerospace industry. So now things are starting to merge. Now, um, you know, uh, it, we have the background on the bio and pharma industry. Now you have the aerospace industry coming in very strong in the last 12, 14 years. So it, it, it's very fitting, right, that we have now this conversation as to what can be done. So now, in addition to being able to support space operations out of the you know, Florida's or, or, or main hubs as Texas also, it Puerto Rico has been playing a key role supporting space operations. Everything from the International Space Station, um, the Orion capsule, um, you name it, has been supported by Puerto Rican technical resources um, based out of Puerto Rico. Uh, the You have things like the distrots, which are uh, basically the chuck up servers for satellites. Uh, you have the, the reaction wheel assemblies, uh, which is basically what positions the satellite in space, you know, where, where you were basically floating and, and letting that um, equipment. All of that, a uh, good portion of design work is currently happening in Puerto Rico. Um, we have five patents already. And mind you, for being an industry the aerospace industry is fairly young in puerto rico but already we have five patents that have been given um to engineers that are locally based and they are in space applications okay which is not probably not broadly known um anything from the board computers the, the main computers that handle payload uh, in space have been developed out of puerto rico uh, you have, as I mentioned, um, for the International Space Station and the Orion capsule, the display unit, the control panels, um, the global positioning system, all of that have been supported out of Puerto Rico. So overall, it, it, I'm, I'm just going to cut it here because then I start talking <laughs> a lot about it. But you have a great knowledge base in Puerto Rico that has been growing extensively over the last decade and is supporting space operations out of Puerto Rico. Thank you, Luis. And actually, I misspoke. I, I said component parts, which actually means something in the industry. And really, Honeywell is um, a very sophisticated systems um, that you develop there. And so thank you for pointing out the, the ones specifically that are being developed on the island. Um, and I also want to point out there's three um, different universities, two private and one public um, system that uh, uh, provide STEM students on the island. And I, I believe this the latest statistic is about um, 60 percent of graduates on the island are in STEM fields. And in fact, just one of those um, universities, UPR Mayaguez, graduates 700 engineers a year. And so it's very impressive uh, data in, in terms of the capacity uh, to support industry coming to the island. Um, so, so going on to the next one, talking about, and we've kind of all touched on this, the opportunity for collaboration between space tech and bioscience on the island. And maybe Heath, you could talk a little bit more about what that collaboration looks like and, and, and talk about Rhodium, because I, I always say that, you know, you talk about space, but you're really, you call yourself a biotech company. Absolutely. And, and it, that was a great lead in, especially what Luis was just saying. Um, to this topic because so what we are so we are rhodium scientific uh, we are one of the commercial service providers um, and implementation partners for the ISS National Lab and what that means is is that we do have dedicated access um, allocation for putting it science mission science payloads onto um, 
Yep, it looks like we lost Heath for a minute there. I know he was uh, calling in remotely off the island. I, I'm going to point out that. Uh, um, and so maybe, Luis, you could talk a little bit more about some of that intersection, because I know that's what um, Honeywell has worked on a little, uh, you know, quite a bit. And and you, I know, can see the future for Puerto Rico around that opportunity. Oh, here's Heath back. So. Hey. <laughs> And the, the original plan. That was an eject button there, I think. Um, welcome to space. Uh, <laughs> so as I, as I was saying on that, um, perfectly on the blank screen. Um, so what that means for us is that we have allocation on any one of the vehicles, the, the rockets that go to the International Space Station. We can put science and science payloads onto and operate those on the space station. So that's that's the technical side of this. But from a bioscience standpoint, yes, we are a biotech company, which means we are doing our own research. We're developing new ideas, developing projects, uh, but we're also working with and partnering with entities, uh, whether it's government entities, university or the private sector. And that's where we see a, an amazing opportunity within Puerto Rico, because everybody talks about building an economy in space and building the low Earth order orbit economy and develop you already have a biotech sector you have an amazing biotech sector in puerto rico and so this is not reinventing something this is not okay you have to stop what you're doing and now go to space what we want to emphasize is is that everybody has the opportunity to advance what you're currently doing the products that you're currently making the research and development that's currently going on in your academic lab or in your industry lab to take advantage of what then is able to be done in the space environment. And that's that partnership that we're wanting to work with teams out of Puerto Rico and especially with the Puerto Rican Law, uh, Space Launch Challenge mm -hmm. is to show that mm -hmm. these are opportunities where you can go and test, you can go and develop you can start understanding how space can enhance what you're doing. The key factor that people, everybody needs to recognize is, is that five, seven years ago, to get to space, you really had to go through one of the NASA centers. You had to go through and get into the queue through one of the NASA portals. And, in, and to do that, it was difficult for somebody that's not embedded within the NASA culture to get into it. And then once when you do, it takes two or three years to launch. What we're doing with the Puerto Rican Space Launch Challenge is showing that we can develop a project, develop a payload, develop a mission, launch it within six to eight months, return it, and start getting your results now. And so this changing of testing and launching today's technology today is very important shift in the market and shift in what is capable and able to be done in space. And so that's where I really think that some of the conversation needs to be focused on with today's webinar is how we can do things now. And so we have a lot of people listening and, and watching right now. Um, I challenge you through the rest of the day's session to add some questions and comments to the, to the window there so that let's start talking about your work let's start ask, answering your questions getting you involved because we're not joking about let's do this now um like i just got back from kennedy space center yesterday from some samples that we got back from the, the iss just a couple of days ago um, this is real with it and these are the partnerships that we want to talk about we can get very specific if you ask some right questions right now that those listening um, and maybe answer your questions and get you started so that's that's why we're here today. It's exciting to do it. Thanks, Heath. And, and this is a real differentiator for Puerto Rico, um, not just nationally, but globally, to have the um, bioscience industry. And again, in those four areas, so it's not just pharma, it's medical device, it's uh, ag tech, it goes across the entire uh, spectrum. 
but to have the three elements where it's the strength in bioscience, the strength in aerospace, and the strength in logistics um, is really important. So, um, and, and as you were talking about partnerships on the island, um, Andrea, maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the um, partnerships that you've been working on. And I'm going to say not just recently, but you have worked for quite a while um, with the Space Foundation. And in fact, I'm going to do a little Andrea brag here that um, she was invited to be a guest panelist at the um, uh, the Space Symposium that was last week in Colorado Springs. So maybe you can talk a little bit about um, what you're representing for Puerto Rico and some of your previous com um, conversations about partnership. Yes, absolutely. So first of all, I think it is very important to point out uh, the importance of collaborating with other organizations that already have the scaffolding. Like, again, I know that there's a large uh, aerospace industry on the island. However, in my case, I'm talking from the grants perspective specifically, we fund a lot of biotech, bioscience, pharma projects. So this is why we've been in conversations with the Space Foundation and the Milo Space Science Institute to explore new curriculums and programs that will help us amplify research capabilities as well as strengthen our pipeline. That's another thing. Uh, during my visit to the Space Symposium, we spoke um, about creating awareness. Again, as Heath was doing before, um, there's a big need of creating awareness because some people do not know that they are working in awesome projects here on Earth. But these projects, the exact same project, and Heath, that is the expert, can correct me, you can send those those projects to space. However, if we do not create that awareness, people, the scientific community that are not working in space, they are not going to know that these opportunities um, exist. On the, on the other hand, as we know, like the space industry is growing um, very, very rapidly. And specifically, um, just over 12 years ago, the government of Puerto Rico established aerospace as one of the emerging strategic industrial sectors. I know a lot of the aerospace industry on the island are working on developing that pipeline. However, it is very, very important to to start creating again that awareness from very from a very early stage on kids. So we have also like a STEM program um, that is led by um, Jorge Valentine. So that's why we've been in conversation with with other organizations that already have all these programs in place. We do not want to reinvent the wheel. We want to bring the resources to the island to promote and and to show not only students at a university mm -hmm. level, but kids that space is an option, that they can pursue careers in, in space. And also uh, when the industry co collaborate with, with schools, they can also work with these curriculums. We wanna prepare these kids for the works that are gonna be available because that's another big issue that we, we have students that graduate, however, they don't have the skills that the industry me. So right now, this is, again, um, a new endeavor uh, for me, but I'm extremely excited to be part of it. Great. Thank you, Andreaka. And and going back to Luis's comment earlier, you know, we, we the island has long um, developed talent for NASA and sent them to uh, other places. Um, and we want to keep them home um, and they want to stay yes. home. And so that's an opportunity. And that's one of the reasons why we're pursuing this. Um, you know, I think this has been a great background for kind of some of the work that we're doing and just on behalf of the governor's council, um, which was formed um, when the uh, Ports Authority made a, an application to the um, FAA to establish a spaceport on the east coast of the island um, for horizontal launch. And so that's a little bit um, has jump started um, some of these conversations and, and puts an exclamation point at the end of the opportunity. So um, I think with that background, we're gonna start taking questions from uh, the audience that has written in. Um, we have Jose uh, Figueroa um, who asks, are there any launch pad tech that is, that are, uh, that's coming to Puerto Rico? 
and again, talking about the new uh, spaceport, and that's kind of the um, step one. But maybe this is a question either for um, Luis or uh, uh, Heath regarding um, that type of uh, granular technology and what our position is in being able to support that. So just kind of want to make sure that I understand what the question was. Is it in relation to um, the departure, the departure of uh, of rockets? Uh, I kind of, can you repeat the question? Kind of got lost on that. So the way it was written was, any launch pad tech coming for PR? So that's kind of what the government is currently um, working on. Um, kind of defining, you know, what opportunities are out there to have an operator um, do the, the launching pads. Um, I don't think we're there yet um, in terms of, you know, having a specific name, but it's in the works. Um, that's kind of what it's in the work right now. Awesome. Th thank you. And I, I, I think the timeline is the, the application for certification has been sent in. And what's unique in Puerto Rico mm -hmm. is that we already have infrastructure for those horizontal launch and land capabilities um, at the vacated uh, military uh, base, the Naval base Roosevelt Roads out on the east coast of the island. So the timeline is shorter for Puerto Rico um, uh, to develop that. Um, and then um, uh, Jose um, Figueroa actually had a follow up question to that saying, um, and I know Heath, you can answer this. Well, what are the costs of the rideshare for orbital launches? And so I think this is like the cost of the payload that we've uh, discussed before. Absolutely. So the, the, the cost obviously depends on the size of the payload itself. Um, for single deployment orbital class satellites, there's a, a specific uh, rideshare mechanism that can lower the cost. You, you, you piggyback upon somebody else's primary launch, primary satellite launches. Um, those are coming down uh, in cost, but overall in, the, in terms of kilograms, pounds or price per kilogram can be in the order of 20 to 30 to $40,000 uh, per kilo for satellite mm -hmm. launches. For doing what we're talking about, and especially between the bioscience sectors, when we're talking about going to the International Space Station, there are government subsidies right now that help lower these costs that help reduce that overall barrier to entry, which used to be $500,000, mean, The cost is much, much lower now with the, and the, the challenges that we're doing now within, um, with the Puerto Rican Trust, with Andreca's group, um, are less than six figures now. And so we're getting these launch and the overall activities within academic budgets, within startup uh, funding for new ventures for new companies, um, you're now within the capability and capacities to go to the International Space Station to operate on orbit for 30, 45, 60 days um, at costs that are now very much comparable to, say, some of the suborbital or even the parabolic missions, the parabolic flights to test zero G. Um, it is now affordable to go not just once, but do iterative program developments within uh, the academic budgets, uh, funding grants from NSF, NIH, those type styles are definitely within range of cost now. So hopefully with your question, I got a little bit on satellite, a little bit on ISS. If you have more specifics, glad to jump in with more details. Well, and is this the appropriate time to say, I believe our first payload launch that'll be uh, late December, early January, um, has been fully sponsored. And so that is the challenge um, in and of itself is uh, uh, seeking proposals to be able to um, uh, uh, provide that sponsored service to the winner of that challenge. Absolutely. And there and there will be, and that's part of what um, we are developing right now. And so from some of the workshops that are now online, thanks to the Puerto Rico Science Trust, um, we do have funding for two missions to go to the International Space Station, one focused on bioscience, uh, biotech, a science mission, and then one focused on some hardware development, some small, small tech uh, development, looking at novel analytic devi analytical devices to do and, and collect unique data within the International Space Station. So 
these are two challenges, two different uh, requests for proposals that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but these are for funded missions, funded flights. And so we are looking forward to seeing how many proposals uh, that we can develop during that open call uh, and start increasing, as Enrique, you said very well, that education side on this so that teams understand and labs understand that they can do this and they should do this, that this you hear a lot of, oh, I didn't know this was possible. I didn't know we were uh, that this applied to us. Um, it does and you can. And that's what we hope that this challenge really gets out to everybody in the webinar today, especially lets everybody understand that space is there for them and is accessible now. Great, great. Thank you. Um, and now I'm going on to the next question. Um, and, and by the way, very exciting. And, and um, we're, we're delighted by the sponsors who are, are um, at Rodium Scientific included, the Science Trust included, and actually Honeywell also, um, who has been a sponsor of this effort uh, as well. So we're very appreciative for the support that we're getting. Um, th the next question comes from James Hill, who asks, is there a resource for SMEs looking for industrial or laboratory space, also a directory of critical services like industrial waste management? And um, I do know that um, Invest Puerto Rico um, has a, 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 a significant databases of available laboratory space um, and opportunities that trust um, Andrea can, could can talk a little bit about that. Um, and maybe Luis was nodding his head. I know he has um, a lot of familiarity with that because that's exactly what we're trying to promote. Um, so maybe Andrea, you can talk a little bit about some of the resources. I um, mean, it might not be for an SME necessarily through the trust. Um, it might be also through SBA or some of the other resources on the island. But, but certainly if they reach out to invest Puerto Rico, I think they're, they can serve as the focal point to direct them either to find out of industrial or lab space that may be available out there. And any they also have a repository, as you mentioned, of you know broad services. Mind you, Puerto Rico, for being a small island, is only 7% um, tourism, right? So it's just 47% of the GDP is manufacturing and then another 13 is just high tech services. So there is a broad offering of services that are out there. And I think by reaching out to Invest Puerto Rico, they will be the key POC or point of contact that can di um, direct them in the right di uh, or point them in the right direction. Exactly. And that's their skill set is kind of um, uh, just weaving together the right solution, depending on the unique um, needs and capabilities of the of the entities that that are working with them. So and on the industrial waste management side, um, honestly, I'm not um, I'm, I'm not familiar with anything along that. I do know that there is also a project at Invest Puerto Rico um, to look at some of those waste streams. And so, again, they they are the, the primary resource for it, for that kind of information. Um, and maybe Peter. Peter will come on um, at the end and kind of give a little bit of uh, additional information on that. Um, uh, Armando Arias asks, is this program also integrated into Act 60 of Puerto Rico as an incentive for trade or commerce? And um, uh, I'm not sure what is what you mean by integrated. Um, you know, Act 60 has a number of different incentives that are related to uh, uh, various industry uh, 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 of, uh, focal areas. And if you're asking if they are, they can complement each other, I would say absolutely. We, we've talked about that and, and we've talked about that with the Science Trust. They mesh perfectly together. So um, I hope that as as as. Uh, answers that question. And if not, again, Peter uh, Ruiz is your resource to get that answered more completely. And, and you know, a lot of the work that is going on in this environment, it's novel in nature, right? So a lot of research and development activities. And if you take at 60, part of what you can take advantage of, it's one of the incentives for R&D activities. So, you know, to your point, it, it you know, complements each other very well. And if anyone has a proposal out there, definitely should seek um, additional information as to, you know, how they can present their proposal and what advantages through Act 60 they can, they can benefit from. 
Thank you. And thank you, Luis, for uh, mentioning the uh, R&D uh, incentives. So I do know that those are um, the R&D incentive is 50 percent of all expenditures on the island uh, qualify for tax credits, tax credits that are um, saleable on the open market. And in fact, the exchange rate in Puerto Rico is significantly more favorable um, than other places um, because it could be purchased by entities, uh, corporations that are currently paying taxes. And so um, it's really actually uh, one of the most favorable incentive programs in the country for uh, research and development. Um, the next question is, John asks, I saw the RFP for the spaceport. What is the status of the partnership with the US Space Force and Air Force? Did they participate in the RFP preparation? And are any commitments to are there any commitments to fund these uh, projects? What are the next steps? So th there was a, that, there was a lot packaged in that one question. Um, and uh, Andrea, if somebody wants to go first, otherwise I'll I'll just say that I, the RFP. Go ahead. Yeah, I can. The, I have information regarding the partnership with the U.S. Space, Space Force from the academia perspective. Uh, just uh, last September, uh, the University of Puerto Rico signed a partnership agreement with the Space Force. Um, and basically the goal is to build solutions for current and future research projects that can further national security objectives in the space domain, and also grow and develop a qualified, diverse and inclusive workshops. This is this is awesome because uh, the University of Puerto Rico is the number 14 uh, of the universities around the United States. So so those are great news. However, regarding the other uh, questions, maybe someone else in the panel can can assist us with that. So, so I can offer that when we were at the Space Symposium, we did uh, meet with leaders from uh, the Space Force and um, in fact, my my favorite uh, uh, conversation was with General Purdy, who is in charge of Space Force Innovation. And uh, he and his aide were quite literally looking at their phones and looking at the favorable geographic position of Puerto Rico and saying, yeah, how can we continue this conversation? And so, um, you know, I, I think um, the university partnership is a huge first, first step. And um, there, those of you who have tracked Puerto Rico on uh, LinkedIn or in the news will see that um, there have been visits to the White House, uh, speaking to the Space Council, and then multiple meetings um, uh, with the Space Force. And so that definitely our next step is to solidify that, uh, that partnership. And also, I think, um, Gail, I would like to add that the Congress um, approved an allocation of seven point. Five million dollars for the construction of the Aerospace Research Institute uh, in Maya West. Um, what and what this uh, uh, research institute wants to do is uh, to train students to become future engineers and to continue undergraduate and graduate research on topics that are of interest of the industry. So yes, we've been in conversation, and I believe right now one of the main campuses working with 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 the space industry is the Colegio de Mayagüez or the University of Puerto Rico at, at Mayagüez. And I would like to add um, that Dr. Sheila Torres is not here, but she is the lead of the Turbo Lab. This was a partnership between Pratt and Whitney and the University of Puerto Rico in Mayagüez. And basically what they want to do is to have the first aerospace center of excellence in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean, and what they want to do is to train students and faculty in concepts re um, relevant in the aerospace engineering. And what um, something interesting that she said it was that it it's a great opportunity for cross training. So they want to bring students from the mechanical, electrical, and software uh, engineering. So there's a lot of stuff also happening there specifically in 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 Maya West. Great. And, and I'm going to speak, I'm going to now uh, take off my moderator hat and speak from the perspective of the Puerto Rico 5G zone. Um, one of the things about Puerto Rico, and it's because of its unique, um, because of the uniqueness of the jurisdiction being both uh, on U.S. soil and also having some international qualities to it, it's, it's, we have a research laboratory that is zero trust architecture enabled, and it's, um, 
on a platform with high performance computing that also allows for the intersection in that platform of foreign, domestic, terrestrial, non-terrestrial, um, uh, cooperative and non-cooperative networks. So from a research perspective, Puerto Rico really has capabilities on that communication side, uh, which is very interesting to the Space Force because that, that's really what they're looking at. A lot of their um, activities are around um, communication security. And so um, that is furthering the conversation. We were excited that they were very excited to, um, to continue that conversation about growing the capacity to do that research on the island of Puerto Rico. Um, uh, so the next question is out, uh, Walter uh, Almani who asks, um, do we have a projected timeline of the events um, that can be shared? And you know, all of these things, we are waiting on various uh, federal agencies, local agencies, so that uh, we can give projections and uh, hopeful projections. And I would say that the one projection definitively is that the RFPs for the spaceport are due um, uh, in May. And so the decision on that would be sometime, uh, certainly by the end of the year, um, the launch uh, timeline for that first payload off the island of Puerto Rico is either end of December, early January. And the hope is that we will receive the certification for horizontal launch and land at uh, uh, SEBA sometime in May of 2024. So um, that's the part that I can um, that I can share. Um, and this is a question specifically, again, from Jose Figueroa for, uh, for you, Luis. Um, is Honeywell engaged in any R&D specifically for the spaceport at SEBA? And would R&D for mar uh, maritime vertical launch platforms also qualify? Okay, so we're not doing R&D specifically for SEBA, for the SEBA spaceports, because that is something that will come, uh, you know, um, further down the line when, once it's approved. But we are doing R&D activities out of Puerto Rico for space applications and for space products and for, um, you know, the, all the other um, activities that we have going on in space. And not only are we doing that, we're doing it for the commercial side and we're also doing it for the military side and we're doing it out of Puerto Rico. And that's so exciting. And the island is so proud of that, uh, uh, by the way. And, and just uh, speaking again of timelines, the timeline, the um, International Space Station um, has a decommission date of 2030. And there's projections. There are four entities that are looking at uh, having commercial space stations starting to deploy in 2026. And so we're we're really wanting Puerto Rico to be positioned for that intersection of those two dates uh, between uh, the uh, 2026 when there's new commercial opportunities and the um, federal uh, space station gets decommissioned. That's when that transition between the two industries and um, Honeywell having uh, th that experience in transitioning uh, both between defense, military and commercial would be really important. Um, and then also uh, for you, Andreka, the next question is, um, would R&D for maritime vertical launch platforms qualify um, under the, U the UPR Space Force Compact? Um, and I don't know that you have specific no, I, compact. Yes, like I do not have an answer for that, but I will be glad if Jose Figueroa sent me a message, I can connect them with the people at the UPR uh, and they can provide him with more information. Absolutely. Great. And I think we actually said that um, any questions we didn't get a chance to answer during this session, um, we would collaborate as a team and bring in our, our other partners and they can, um, we can answer through that. And, and, and uh, I, I know Peter's going to come back in and close the session. Um, I just wanted to add one more thing. The next question is, is there a link to the initiative with Roosevelt Roads? And, um, there, there um, certainly um, anything that happens in SEBA um, is going to uh, integrate that uh, activities that are going on at Roosevelt Roads because they're they're uh, cooperative partners and cooperative neighbors. So uh, thank you. And uh, now I think yeah. I, w I would like to add something uh, before Peter join us um, and is that uh, we are currently working with the guidelines for our microgravity 
challenge. So um, if it's okay with the participants, we have their contact information. So once we have the RFP open, we will be sending that information so they can read the, the guidelines, the instructions, the timeline, et cetera. But we really want to see um, uh, proposals from, from, from researchers here on the island. And again, if you have questions or if you would like to touch base outside of this platform, Dr. Heath Mill is here, Gail, myself, uh, Luis, we can we can chat and we can talk about these these uh, challenge and we're very, very excited to be to be part of this new initiative. Thank you. Great. And maybe I think Heath and uh, Luis both have comments to make before we uh, uh, turn back to Peter. Yeah, one one quick thing to think about, and we're talking about Roosevelt Rose, we're talking about the spaceport, we're talking also on orbit with the new space stations coming online. All of these entities and these locations are looking to build towards the future. Right now, if you are listening to this and you're thinking about how can I get involved in those, get involved now. And so developing your projects now, testing your science and your engineering in space now sets you up to be a, a known entity, a, an experienced researcher, developer, hardware engineer, scientist, for when these new platforms come online. We're talking about scaling when we get to the spaceport, when we get to the new international, the new space stations, to understand how to scale and understand what should be scaled. These ideas should be tested today on the International Space Station test your hardware, test these new ideas while we can through some of the subsidized funding, especially through the challenge. And, and I really stress this heavily with the challenge during the and after the, the re request for proposals comes out, reach out to me, reach out to us at Rhodium so we have an understanding as to what is a feasible proposal, what can be operated in space. We are here to, and as Andrea said very eloquently earlier, to educate on this. Because yes, with this challenge, we're looking at flying two projects, two missions to space, but we want to develop 10, 20, 30 viable missions that can go to space, that can, we will work with you to find additional funding, additional investors, additional ways of getting your mission to space. So let us work with you to make sure that what you develop, your hard work, your hard science, your hard engineering, the things that you're doing and doing extremely well, now fits into the profile to be able to go to space. We'll, we'll share our knowledge with you, we'll work with you on those, and then that can lead to the new horizontal or possibly vertical launch landing capabilities out in uh, at Roosevelt Roads. So we're Thank building you. this. So that's- No, the thank, th thank you. And, and again, the timelines that we gave, um, you're right. Now is the time they need to be ready um, on the island and ready for the 2026 timeline. And when the uh, certification comes in, Luis, I know you had a comment and then we're going to go back to uh, Peter. Yes. I, I, and it's a quick anecdote. Um, 14 years ago, when we started 14, 15 years ago, there was no aerospace education in Puerto Rico. And when we used to go to universities to hire, you know, people associate Honeyball mostly with the thermostats, which is kind of hard to do in Puerto Rico because the weather is fairly <laughs> and we don't use thermostats um, quite often. But Honeywell, it's very big in aerospace. Actually, we can do 80% of, of, uh, of, uh, of an aircraft, of the parts of an aircraft, everything except the assembly. And what we started doing in order to foster interest in students on aerospace education was rocket launch competition. Actually, we sponsored for that for several years, um, several years amongst um, engineering students at all four engineering universities on the island. Many of them became um, employees of ours, and from there the industry grew. Now you can you have most of the big players on the aerospace sector in Puerto Rico, and there's going to be good news in the upcoming year about several others that are coming. And the reason I say that is because going back to the micro um, challenge, um, this is your opportunity to start there. Um, and, you know, it is a very bright future. There is great people committed to make, making this work. And, you know, if you get involved now to, to um, Heat's point, 
Um, you know, it's kind of, you know, we'll set you up in order to be part of that success that is to come. Wonderful. And thank you also for pitching and reminding people that Puerto Rico is a beautiful place and the weather is perfect all the time. So, um, so with that, uh, we'll go back to Peter and he can wrap up the session today. Thank you. Uh, thank you all so much for the for the great conversation. No, thank you all. No, I, I just wanted to uh, recap. With the, there's a perfect collision of uh, of bioscience and aerospace. Part of it's due to the 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 players that, that have already been on the island. Part of it's all, all the new players that are coming and establishing themselves. And I, th I think people forget there's 3.2 million people on the island. 80 plus universities. Half of the the degrees being pumped out annually are, are STEM degrees. So it's it's a perfect uh, climate for for continued growth, and and I just want to make sure that that whether you're even even if it's not a bioscience project, it's not an aerospace project, we're always here to to help answer questions, help land people. Uh, it could be an energy, it could be a tech, it could be something else. Um, we don't care if it's industrial, if it's an office, if it's a lab space. Um, we're, we're here to answer questions. We're here to help you kind of land softly. And and on that note, there we do have landing pads in and different centers of research for for aerospace, for bio, for for tech in general. Um, we have incentives. We, we're always available, um, whether in Puerto Rico, at the same time, we're always traveling around. I, I know one of my uh, counterparts on the business team is in Germany right now. Uh, we'll be at Select USA in DC next week. We'll also, I'll be at Space Tech Expo in Southern California next week. Uh, we'll be at Bio in Boston uh, in June. So we're, we're always around. We're always available by, their, by web meetings, in person, phone calls. So I just wanted to wrap up with whether it's this team Anyone at the Invest Puerto Rico team, we're here to answer questions. And if there are questions, feel free to dig us up on investpr.org. Uh, email me, uh, my, all our contact info is on there. Give me a call. And if it's for, it's a question for one of the, uh, for Gail or one of the panelists, shoot us uh, an email. We'll, we'll pass on the, the message and pass on their contact info. And I, I want to just add into that, Peter, too, that we have yeah. much larger um a, a, a collaborative group of experts. So the questions aren't limited to this group, um, but we can help navigate that. Perfect. No, I, I thank you all for, for joining and uh, hopefully we have a, a part two and a part three, because I know these conversations can easily go two, three hours and, and get really niche questions on, on specifics. Uh, so, but, but I thank you for your time and thank you for all our, our guests that are joining us online.